Hey, what's up, everybody? Nick Unreal for New Orleans Stop Football, and welcome to our Beat Writer Mock Draft. The goal of this is just to collaborate with other beat writers around the league and get a feel for what each team is thinking and to run through a simulation of the draft to see how things might play out. We appreciate you checking it out, and hopefully if you like this analysis, you'll check us out on New Orleans Stop Football for a lot more about the Saints, but also some things about the NFL as well. Jacksonville, you're on the clock. The big question facing the Jaguars after the first wave of free agency is, did they do enough to fill their holes so they don't feel like they have to reach for a player at number one overall? One thing the Jaguars haven't done so far is address their edge rush. And that is why I think at number one overall, the Jaguars will do just that. I think the Jaguars go with the higher floor and a safer bet in Michigan's Aiden Hutchinson. Hutchinson may have some ceiling questions, but ultimately he answered all questions about his ability to play in space at the combine by testing terrific agility numbers. Hutchinson has production, the athletic background, and the tape to back up being the number one overall pick. With the number two pick in the draft, I have the Detroit Lions taking Florida State edge rusher Jermaine Johnson. That's not a name that you're going to hear at number two a lot. And frankly, I think the Lions would prefer Aiden Hutchinson. He went number one in this draft. This may change, but the reasoning is simple. Uh, I don't think Kayvon Thibodeau fits what the Lions want uh, in their locker room at this point under Dan Campbell. Um, I don't know that the value is quite there with Kyle Hamilton, as good a player as he is to spend the number two pick in the draft on a safety. Malik Willis, certainly a possibility if the Lions loved him from the senior bowl. Um, but, you know, the, the feedback that I get uh, is that this is not the year to take a quarterback. So if the Lions are stuck at number two. They don't have a need on the offensive line. They want an edge rusher. Jermaine Johnson is a guy who makes sense. He played for them at the senior bowl, had a great performance down there. A really good season at Florida State. He would fill a big need for the Lions at number two. If I'm the Texans and Kyle Hamilton's safety out of Notre Dame is still available at three, I'm taking for a couple of reasons. They just lost their best defensive player, Justin Reed, to the Chiefs this offseason, which means it's a major position of need for rebuilding franchise in search of cornerstones. GM Nick Casario is looking for culture fits long term, and Kyle Hamilton fits that bill. Remember, this is a pick that could be under contract for up to five years. And think of the versatility that he could have in Lovey Smith's defense. He can play up, he can play back, he can play multiple positions. Kyle Hamilton's potential seems way too high to pass up. A potential All-Pro could be under contract for long-term. This seems like the right pick to me. As if having defensive-minded head coach Robert Sala wasn't clue enough, the Jets let everyone in on their plans to add a pass rusher. In the draft, they find just that in Kayvon Thibodeau. You're talking about a player who not long ago was in consideration to be the number one pick in the draft. He's there for the Jets at number four, and he will make Robert Sala and the rest of his defensive staff very, very happy. With the fifth overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Charles Cross, offensive tackle, Mississippi State. The Giants have their pick here of Iki Aquanu, Evan Neal, and Cross. Who knows which way they go? Cross is the most likely to still be on the board at five. The Giants have been on him and very high on him for a while now. They and the NFL evaluators throughout the league believe that he can play right tackle. And that's where the Giants need to fill a vacancy desperately to help protect the big guy. So it's Charles Cross at five. What do you think of that, DJ? Nice. Hey, this is Joe Person with The Athletic in Charlotte. Picking my mock draft for the Panthers. I'm going at number six, Icky Iquano, NC State left tackle. Very good athletic left tackle. Uh, in fact, you know, in my mind, he and Evan Neal are the top of this, this tackle class. If one of these guys falls to them, in this case, both of them did, I think Panthers would be very happy to get a Quanu. This is a franchise that hasn't had a cornerstone left tackle since Jordan Gross retired. That was the end of the 2013 season. So a Quanu's my pick. Here's my favorite sauce. And with the seventh overall pick in the 2022 NFL Draft, the Giants are taking their favorite sauce. Ahmad Sauce Gardner, the Cincinnati cornerback, Bearcats stud on the outside. Don Wink Martindale, the Giants' new defensive coordinator, wants lockdown corners to play press man so he can create pressure on the quarterback and send extra bodies. With the impending possible departure of James Bradbury, the Giants need help. Even with Bradbury on the roster, last year they were poised to potentially draft Pat Sertain or J.C. Horn if either of them had fallen to their number 11 pick. So the Giants split between offense and defense in the top 10 and retool their roster for the long haul. 
This is D. Orlando Ledbetter of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Under this scenario, the Falcons will be heartbroken by the Giants' selection of Sauce Gardner with the seventh pick. Then they would go right down the road here to Athens, where I'm on my way. They, uh, they need have a lot of needs. So, you know, quarterback would be uh, Malik Willis would be in play, Kenny Pickett. But, um, you know, they say they're going to take the best player, Davis. Could sit in the middle with their 3-4 and uh, you know they could worry about third down uh, when they get to third down because they haven't been getting into many third downs anyway so when they pick the Falcons take Davis Georgia defensive tackle this is Michael Sean Dugard picking on behalf of the Seattle Seahawks uh, with the ninth pick in the 2022 draft the Seahawks will take Malik Willis quarterback out of Liberty the logic here is pretty obvious Seahawks just traded away their franchise quarterback, so they didn't do everything possible to try and find another one. Um, Malik's obviously raw. A lot of people don't feel like he's ready to jump in and start from day one. If you look at the arm strength, um, just the overall talent, the mobility. Um, so yeah, when you don't have a quarterback, though, you really don't have that many options other than to do everything you can to try to find a guy to build on, um, and that they don't have that right now in Jacob Eason or Drew Locke. So they'll go quarterback with their uh, with the number nine pick. After addressing pass rusher with their first first round pick, the Jets get quarterback Zach Wilson a little bit of help with their second first rounder. Garrett Wilson is a dynamic player. He's elusive, he's agile, he's fast, he's explosive, and he excels after the catch. That makes him a tailor-made fit for Mike LaFleur's offensive scheme. He will be one of the Jets' starting receivers from Week 1, pairing with Elijah Moore and Corey Davis to give the Jets' offense a pretty good 1-2-3 punch, arguably their most talented trio in quite some time. The Washington Commanders choose Drake London at number 11 because they desperately need another threat in the pass game. They tried adding to the receiving court last year, but injuries derailed Curtis Samuel's first season and De'Ami Brown really struggled as a rookie. Enter Drake London with his size and athleticism. Certainly his injury will be something to watch and his pro day in early April will be monitored closely, but he could really be a boon to this offense. Hey everybody, Matthew Collar here, Minnesota Vikings reporter with Purple Insider. And with the 12th overall pick, the Vikings are going with Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback out of LSU. If you look at the Vikings roster, as we speak, there aren't many cornerbacks to speak of. So now the Vikings are forced to take another bite at the apple, but they've got a very good prospect here to do it with in Derek Stingley Jr. He may have been injured over the last couple of years, but at his best, he is the shutdown corner and may even have island corner potential for the Vikings. This is a team that is rebuilding its defense. They brought in Zadarius Smith, Jordan Hicks, Harrison Phillips in the free agency realm, but have not made many moves in the secondary and they have a huge spot to fill as far as corners. So Derek Stingley Jr is the Minnesota Vikings pick. Evan Hill is still available at 13. I'm taking him, I almost picked him at three. Wasn't this guy supposed to be number one overall at one point? I know he skipped his NFL combine workout, but I'm sure when Alabama has his pro day on March 30th, all this will change. Regardless, this is a major position to need for the Texans. You look at their offense, last year was putrid, and their running game was the worst in team history, and their offensive line pass protecting efficiency was one of the lowest in the league. This is a position that can help them and think about this. Money is a big deal here. Teron Armstead just signed with the Dolphins five years, $75 million. They'd get him for up to five years for significantly cheaper for a team that needs pass protection. They have Laramie Tunsil through a couple of seasons, but they're going to lose Titus Howard after this year. They need to establish that on the offensive line, and Evan Neal is a safe pick here. With the 14th pick in the first round of the NFL draft, the Ravens will select Northern Iowa offensive tackle Trevor Penning. The Ravens have made no secret that they are looking to improve their tackle depth this this offseason. Even after signing veteran Morgan Moses, they're still looking. Penning is a big, nasty tackle, the exact type of offensive lineman that the Ravens love. He's big in the ground game. We know the Ravens are going to run the football. There's still so many questions about the long-term health of former All-Pro left tackle Ronnie Stanley. The Ravens need a contingency plan at left tackle, and Penning would be just that. With the 15th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles will select Trayvon Walker, defensive end from Georgia. The quarterback discussion aside, uh, finding edge rusher help was the Eagles' biggest need this offseason. They did sign Hassan Reddick, will play the Sam position. 
Uh, they also signed Derek Barnett, whatever, uh, that won't affect their draft plans. Trayvon Walker somehow falls to the Eagles 15, not going to turn it down, take him, bang, done, easy decision. Pick 16, considered uh, Nicobe Dean from Georgia and Devin Lloyd from uh, Utah, the two linebackers. But since they're both there and you're going to be picking again at 19, I suspect that at least one of those guys will still be there then. So for now, we'll take Traylon Burks, wide receiver from Arkansas. The Eagles whiffed on a number of different wide receivers during free agency this year, from Christian Kirk to Allen Robinson. They tried to trade for Calvin Ridley. Uh, they also were in on Robert Woods, is my understanding. So uh, they find a big, uh, you know, bulky, tackle-breaking yards after catch monster in Burks. With the 17th pick in the draft, the Chargers will take Ohio State wide receiver Chris Olave. Olave will bring speed on the outside, something the Chargers currently lack. He will complement both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, giving quarterback Justin Herbert another weapon to work with in 2022. So far this offseason, the Chargers mostly have addressed defense, where the majority of their issues were last season. They have added quarterback J.C. Jackson and edge rusher Khalil Mack among their most prominent moves in an attempt to fix things on that side of the ball. Going into the draft now, I believe they'll look offense to start. Hey, Nick Underhill, New Orleans dot football, pick him for the Saints. And the selection here is going to be wide receiver Jameson Williams from Alabama. This is not an easy pick to make, though, even though the Saints have a huge obvious need at wide receiver. Passing on someone like Pittsburgh quarterback Kenny Pickett at this spot is not an easy decision. And I also very easily could have looked at a offensive tackle or even a free safety for the Saints following the retirement of Malcolm Jenkins. And if Marcus May moves over to the strong side, they'll have a need at that free safety spot. But wide receiver is such a big and significant need for this team that it felt like there was really no other choice but to address it with this pick. Assuming health, Williams should give the Saints a long-term option there, a great sidekick to Michael Thomas, and put some firepower back on the field for Jameis Winston as he tries to resurrect the narrative around his career and get back to the stature that he thinks he deserves to be at in the NFL. So getting a wide receiver here isn't necessarily a no-brainer, but it is an absolute must for this team and addressing it early in the draft is a solution at a position that has to be addressed. As promised previously with my 19th pick, but the Eagles are going linebacker. We'll go Devin Lloyd from Utah. Tall, rangy linebacker. Uh, it will be the best linebacker the Eagles have in, in terms of coverage. Uh, probably playing the run and even getting after the quarterback uh, on blitzes. He's the three down linebacker that the Eagles have really needed for, I don't know, a decade or so. So they uh, they fixed that position finally. They haven't drafted a linebacker uh, in the first round since 1979, but in a year where they have three first round picks, maybe that trend will change this year. Hey everybody, Alex Kazor from Steelers Depot making the pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers and at number 20, the Steelers select quarterback Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati. Steelers need a quarterback. Yes, Trubisky's on the roster. Same with Mason Rudolph. Those are the short-term bridge options, not the long-term play. And so Pittsburgh in an AFC North that has Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson. They need a first-round quarterback to try to compete with that. And Ritter is their guy. I would have taken Malik Willis, but he's off the board a long time ago. I'm Mike Reese, ESPN Patriots reporter. At 21 for the Patriots, I was struck by how many receivers were off the board. I went with cornerback Trent McDuffie of Washington. J.C. Jackson, the team's top corner, leaves in free agency. Patriots have big hole there. Maybe McDuffie could be a day one starter right off the bat. With a 22nd overall pick in this mock draft, the Green Bay Packers select David Ajabu, edge rusher, Michigan. Now, I can already see Packers fans' eyes roll into the back of their heads at this selection. No, David Ajabu is not a receiver. The Packers desperately need that in this draft. Yes, he did tear his Achilles at his pro day at Michigan, which means 2022 might not be in the cards for him. Brian Gutekinds has the flexibility to take a value pick early, and that's what David Ajabu is. A lot of upside even after the injury. The Packers need long-term talent at edge rusher after losing to Darius Smith this season. That is what David Ajabu gives them. 
I'm Darren Urban from azcardinals.com, and at 23, the Cardinals would take Purdue edge rusher George Karloftis. After the Cardinals lost Chandler Jones in free agency, that's a position of need, and he's a guy that did some good things at Purdue and a, and a draft that really seems to be deep in pass rushers. So at 23, the Cardinals might be able to find somebody that could help with that right away. But I would think that if Karloftis is on the board, he'd be somebody they would have to look at. Again, it's a position of, of need, and this is a draft that seems to have some possibilities there. Hi, this is Michael Gelkin, Cowboys reporter at the Dallas Morning News. With the number 24 overall pick in the 2022 draft, the Cowboys select Zion Johnson, guard slash center out of Boston College. Without a doubt, offensive line is the one position group that the Cowboys are most likely to address with this pick. I'm going with Johnson. He's physical. He's technically refined. And I'm picking him over somebody who is very tempting, and that's Tulsa's Tyler Smith. He's a tackle in college. You can play left guard for the Cowboys immediately and potentially be their long-term solution at tackle where there's a lot of uncertainty. But ultimately, I decided to go with the more technically refined player, and that is Zion Johnson to the to Dallas at 24. All right, with the 25th pick, I had the Bills going with Brees Hall, the running back out of Iowa State. I, you know really thought about giving them a cornerback like Andrew Booth here because he was available, but I think the Bills have been addressing the defensive side of things in free agency with Von Miller and everything else they've done along the defensive line. With Devin Singletary, who's on the final year of his deal, I give them Brees Hall, who for them is somewhat maybe that dynamic three down back that they're lacking right now and trying to figure out exactly where this offense can go into the next phase giving them a little bit of uh, an everything do it all back and giving a one-two punch for that offense, which is just another piece for Josh Allen and uh, that offense to try and get over the hump and finally get to the Super Bowl. Doug Cod from PFF here with the 26th overall pick. I am taking offensive lineman Bernard Raymond out of Central Michigan. He's the top player available on PFF's big board, and he fills a need for the Titans who lost David Quesenberry and Roger Saffold this offseason. I think that Bernard Raymond could start his career at guard if needed. I think that it, he has a future, certainly, either at left tackle or at right tackle. It all depends on what the Titans would want to do with a guy like Dylan Raddins, who was taken in the second round last year. But I think they should be looking for offensive line. The fact that Raymond is the top player available on our big board, it's a good value for the Titans to be taking here. He's a really interesting prospect. He was playing tight end just a couple of years ago, but he was really efficient last year. Only let up one sack, 10 total pressure. So I think that he's certainly ready to be thrust into a role right away in Tennessee. Hey, this is Greg Allman with The Athletic. I am on the clock at number 27 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, intriguing options for the Bucs at 27. My initial thought has been that they would go guard, um, just because they're still down a starting guard. Uh, and Zion and uh, Bernard or Bernhard went uh, two of the three picks ahead of the Bucs. So I, I could go Kenyon Green from Texas A&M. I kind of look hard at going at Kyer Elam from Florida, who's still there. He's a long corner that the Bucks like. Uh, but I think I'm going to go D-line. I'm a little happy that uh, Devontae Wyatt from Georgia is still there at 27, and I'm going to take him. Uh, Devontae Wyatt from Georgia, defensive lineman, is my pick for the Bucks at number 27. Thanks for letting me be a part of this. With the 28th overall pick in this mock draft, the Green Bay Packers select Jahan Dotson, wide receiver, Penn State. And yes, Packers fans, you finally got your receiver in the first round. It's been 20 years since the Packers drafted Javon Walker with a 20th overall pick in the 2002 draft. But in Jahan Dotson, they have a young receiver who provides a lot of the same skill set that Devontae Adams has. He's a little undersized at 5'11", but he's not just a slot receiver. He can work on the perimeter too, just like Devontae Adams moved all, all across the field in Matt LaFleur's offense. It's a long way for Jahan Dotson to go to be the type of receiver in terms of production that Devontae Adams has been, obviously. But he is the type of young player who can help to start rebuild this position. Chiefs are on the clock with the 29th and the 30th selections in this year's first round, and that's a very unusual spot for this franchise to be. Due to the trades that brought them back, Patrick Mahomes in 2017, Frank Clark, and last year Orlando Brown Jr., the Chiefs have only made two first-round selections since 2016. If the Chiefs do sit still and stay at 29 and 30, there's a couple of positions of need that they need to hit. One is cornerback, so they're going to start with Andrew Booth Jr., the cornerback from Clemson. He's got the length and the athleticism the Chiefs like in that position. 
He's an aggressive, you know, player. He can play man to man. Should fit very well into the Steve Spagnolo scheme. Coming back at the 30th pick, they need to address the defensive line. And that's where I'm going to go with Logan Hall from Houston. He can play inside and outside, maybe a little bit of a tweener, but the Chiefs do like those kinds of players. And I think that Hall would certainly fit in with a little bit of what they want to do up front and having somebody with flexibility. He's got athleticism. He's got the bend that I think would really work as an edge rusher. Might be tough, but even if he, all he becomes is an inside player, I think that's still something that the Chiefs need. With the 31st pick, the Cincinnati Bengals are taking Florida cornerback Kyir Elam, who I think has the potential to grow into a true number one role. The Bengals have done a really good job this offseason of fortifying that offensive line to help protect Joe Burrow better than he was during that playoff run just a season ago. You look at that Super Bowl drive, that final drive, the, the Bengals were really a top cornerback away from stopping the Rams. So better officiating would help too, but they bring Kyir Elam into the mix. The Bengals defense becomes a whole lot better. With a 32nd pick in the draft, the Detroit Lions take linebacker N'Kobe Dean from Georgia. Ultimately, N'Kobe Dean is too good to pass up. He may not check all the boxes athletically from a height standpoint, but he's a really good football player, and the Lions need starters in the back seven on defense. Uh, Dean is a guy who could step in and start from day one. So in the first round, the Lions come away with two defensive starters, two playmakers, two guys who should play a big role on that defense that ranked 31st in points allowed last season.